Gary, let's talk a little bit more about the appetite in eating and how to manage that. I'm just thinking that there'll be quite a few patients who could be in a similar position with either your cancer or one that impairs their ability to eat and they'd be interested to know what you've learned along the way. Um, do you get any particular advice or assistance or have you just really learned the hard way yourself how to manage? I think that um, it's just a case of learning, really. No, that's all there is to it. You, you've got to do it by trial and error. There's, there's lots of things at the very start that I thought, I really fancy such and such a meal. And you go to the hassle of cooking it only to find you don't want it when it's put on the plate in front of you. It's hard to eat when your appetite is low, isn't it? Yeah. People mm. don't realise how difficult that is. Mm. What's, what's, the, what's the answer there when you are uh, knowing you have to take a certain amount of calories to have that sustenance, um, but your appetite is pretty flat. It's just, you've just got to accept it and eat. Um, and try, try not to eat, or you don't eat because you don't fancy something. Mm -hmm. And you can watch your weight going down and down and down. And Every five kilos you lose, you've got to add another two days to get it back up again. Is one possibility, it might not work for you, but for some, <laughs> eating what we would consider bad foods. I mean, high calorie foods, for example, desserts or uh, calorie rich foods, which could nice. be relatively low volume. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? For the I mean, amount that you have to eat. I must admit, if we get to the end of the day and I'm short on calories, as long as I haven't got too much saturated fat, mm. I'll have a chocolate bar mm. because that's loaded in calories. Mm. Um, and I enjoy it most of the time. But the fats it's, themselves cause a problem then? They do, but you've got to weigh things up mm. and you've got to get whatever you've got to get the calories in yeah um we before we before i eat any food mm. we look to see what the saturated fat is what the now we've started putting fiber in as well because yeah. we decided i need to get more fiber in mm -hmm. and look at the calories mm. um, what you're looking for is low sat fat high calories mm -hmm. reasonably high well highest protein uh, fiber you can get because not many of the foods contain the fiber you need yeah and it's just a case of persevering and eating them. Does anything tick those boxes all in one go? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, we used to do the, we say we keep a chart, and we kept a chart from day one coming out of hospital, partly to see if what I've been eating has altered my symptoms or anything like that for refluxing or being sick or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, and we could find no correlation between what I'm eating and aspirating or anything like that. No. So we gave up, we haven't given up keeping a chart, mm. but we give up worrying about it because it's obviously not going to make a difference. But you're clearly very organised in order to track what's going on. Would you recommend um, people take, we use that strategy themselves to manage their health complications, whether that's sleep, fatigue, you know, pain or or appetite I problems? I think it's a good idea. We probably do go over the top a bit because we record everything. Um, when we first did the charts, we started off with breakfast and went through to evening meal um, and then started the next day with breakfast again. But for a while now, we've swapped the breakfast to the evenings before, added it on the evening before. Ah, OK. So that at the end of the, the day, you don't know if you, if you stop the day in the, with the evening meal and you're short on calories, there's not much you can do about it then. Yes. But if you uh, come, the, come the next morning, if you were short the day before, you can eat more for breakfast mm. and add it to that day. Or conversely, if you've had too much, you can cut down on your breakfast. Mm. That's mm. something not quite so high in calories and saturated fat. What's been the effect <laughs> of your disease on your taste and your taste buds? Um, nothing tastes the same. Nothing at all. Um, sometimes even coffee feels like you're drinking tar. You know, it's just something solid, almost solid substance that's going down. Um, it hasn't got the taste. Tea, I, I've never been a big tea drinker, but I just don't drink tea anymore. Um, there's not many foods that do taste the same. Mm. Uh, it's, got a, it's got slightly better, but it's, it's not going to be the same because everything's changed at, tells you what you're what you're eating did you have chemotherapy or radiotherapy afterwards 
I had nothing at all, no. No, it's just that that's a common complaint for people, particularly with chemotherapy, that their taste buds can be affected. Oh, right. I didn't know that. Because of the effect of chemotherapy <laughs> on rapidly changing cells, like the you know taste buds. So that is, uh, like I say, a, a, an issue for others who've had chemotherapy, nothing related to esophageal or gastric cancers. Mm. Regarding back to the question of the, of the appetite and eating then, um, are there any tips that you would give to viewers about um, how to manage with a low appetite when they know that they're uh, struggling, you know, against the grain, so to speak, to maintain their weight? Um, if you miss a meal, one meal is not going to be much to miss, so don't worry too much, but try not to miss too many because it takes so long to get the calories and everything back up mm. and get you, therefore get your weight back up. Mm -hmm. And if you lose too much weight, you, you know, you're on the downhill straight away. Yeah. You've got to keep the weight up mm. to, to keep as healthy as you can. What's the effect you find of not eating on the next day's uh, fatigue and function? It, yes, it does make you tired. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm tired quite a lot anyway. I could, I could go to bed every afternoon if I wanted to, but I try not to. Um, I usually have a kip once or twice a week in the afternoon for an hour and a half, um, just, to, just because I need it, mm. um, I get worn out. Mm. Um, even now, I mean, before I was going to bed, probably when I first came out of hospital, probably every day for an hour, mm. but recently it's once, twice a week. Um, if I have a rough night, then I'll go back in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But no, apart from that, I'm... Um, Conversely so then, is there an issue or a, a, a trick, if you like, of doing an activity in the day? Does that stimulate appetite in a certain way? In other words, um, you know, by burning some energy, does it give you that desire to eat a little bit more than normal or, or not really? Um, I'll be honest, I haven't got the... Um, What's the word? The urge to do any exercise at all. Yeah. I have to be um, cajoled into it. Mm. And when um, you are kind of, uh, you know, uh, somebody twists your arm and you do it, what do you notice? Don't, don't notice much difference at all. Mm. I, when, we, when we go away on holiday, I'm, I'm active. Because yes. we go walking around stately homes and places like that. So yeah. I do... A, not strenuous exercise, but moderate exercise because mm -hmm. there's a lot of walking. Um, but that doesn't seem to affect what I eat in the evenings when we get back on that. No. Um, so you haven't too... really noticed a major effect there, really? No. Okay. No, none at all. I find all, all my, obviously all the food I eat are smaller portions than mm. they were before. Um, it's a bit annoying when you go to a restaurant for a meal and they pile your plate up with about 200 chips and a teeny weeny little bit of steak and <laughs> it puts you off straight away. We've, we've asked them not to put so many chips on or put them on a side plate so that I don't actually physically see them on the plate because you see a lot of food and you just think, oh, it's how am I going to eat this? It's, yeah. That's a tip, isn't it? To mm. look at things as manageable portions. Mm. It's rather like trying to do some exercise. If somebody said, you know, go and run 10k or half marathon it's ridiculous for most people yeah you've got to do a very small amount in a bit that you can aim for and think that you might achieve it you know you've got to have a give it a good shot basically yeah but if somebody overwhelms the situation then you know it's it's not good so you're using that regarding food where you're saying you know give me a, a manageable portion yeah and if you do go out and eat and it sounds like you still are from time to time mm -hmm. which is good obviously what what kind of foods would you kind of gravitate towards now? Um, well, chicken, steak, mm. um, that's about it. I usually stick to those two because yeah. anything else um, has either got too much saturated fat, too many <laughs> bad things in it, yeah. or I just don't fancy the taste of it. What about fish? I've never been a fish eater. No. Never. Um, not even fish fingers. No. <laughs> I'm not sure how much fish is in fish fingers. I don't think there's much. <laughs> but no, I've never been. We, we occasionally have fish and chips mm. on the way home on Friday when we go shopping at lunchtime. Yeah. Um, but that's about the only time we have fish. It's the only sort of fish we have. Okay. 
And what's you what's happening with your weight <coughs> right now? How has it been? I mean, I'm sure you're keeping an eye on it. It's steady-ish, um, 68-ish. Mm -hmm. um, you're quite tall, aren't you? Yeah, six, well, I was six foot. I'm five foot, 11 and a half now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's age. <laughs> you start shrinking. <laughs> but no, I, I was well, 82 when I went into hospital. Mm -hmm. um, came out at quite a lot less than that. Uh, yes. I got it back up to about 68. I was, I did get around to the 70s at one time, 72-ish. Yeah. But... Um, if people want to hear that in stone, what is that? Oh, I don't know. I've been a, I've been a metric man for so long. So you're how, how much are you now? Uh, 68. 68. So it's probably around 12 stone? If it's not, mm -hmm. I'll edit that bit out of the video. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a little bit less than that, I think, yeah. Um, and is, you, is your weight stable right now? Yeah, um, if you look at the chart, it goes up and down, but you're only talking about 0.3 of a kilo mm -hmm. at a time. And if I can stay over 67, mm. I don't mind. Yeah. Um, I get worried if it drops to 67 or 67.1, Yeah. but it's, it's not that much of a difference, really. It's only that we monitor it every day. Yeah. Because the first thing I do in the morning is weigh myself. Is that, um, uh, some people would say that's a little too much scrutiny because probably. only because the, the variation on, on a day is, yeah. there's, a, there's a certain random element and the accuracy of scales is not absolutely perfect. Mm. So that, you know, um, it might not be, uh, advisable to weigh that with that frequency but it's obviously up to you I mean mm. there's no guidance on it so what you obviously find that keeping keeping a close eye on it the best thing for you yeah because <laughs> if it drops over a course of three days mm. and I'm not monitoring it yeah um, and it drops dramatic dramatic dr dramatically um, I wouldn't know until it had dropped it's too much uh, and then it's a swine to get it back up again. And what what do you do when the weight's just slight, tending to drift down a little bit? Um, monitor as long as it's not for more than a couple of days. Mm -hmm. There's short of adding a few more calories with a chocolate bar or something. And what if it is more than a few days? I think I'd um, have to seriously think about what I was eating. Mm. Um, eat something I didn't like. Yeah. But quantity wise. I'm, I'm stuck to how much I can get inside anyway. Yes. Have you tried any build-ups or supplements? Yeah, we've been on supplements ever since I came out of hospital. I have um, a drink in the mornings with um, Scandi Shake. Oh yeah, Scandi Shake. Yes. And Calogen. Which has mm -hmm. got fibre, isn't it? Mm, no, it's not. It's fat. Mm. It's um, it's a high calorie, it's, high fat one, is it? Yeah. Low saturated fat. Yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah. Mm. And I only have a, a small amount just to keep the, we adjust it. That's why we have the, do the breakfast on the chart later uh, for, for the, the, the previous day sort of thing. Yeah. Because we can adjust it with the collagen and the scandy shake to bring it up or drop it down if we need it. If we get too high or if we get too low, I can take more scandy shake to boost it. I can't take more collagen because you're only allowed so much at a time. I see. But we can we can up it. Do you get these um, on a repeat prescription now? Yes. They just yeah. get delivered effectively? Well, no, we, well, we collect them from the you chemist each week. Because they can month. be quite bulky if you're having quite a few, can't they? Yes, yeah. That's one of the problems with the build-ups. I did, when I first came out of hospital, I was getting through quite a lot of it. Mm. But now I'm using one, making one sachet last two to three days. Mm. So I'm not, I'm a, it's only a small amount I'm taking yeah. in comparison. Um, I could take more, but I prefer not to. And what do, how do you find the taste of those? Um, I've got a little, found a little trick with the collagen. I uh, always have the neutral and put two spoonfuls of sugar, two spoonfuls of coffee in a measuring jug, um, 100 grams of milk, I mix it all together, warm it up slightly, and then add the collagen in and stir it in thoroughly so as it's mixed. Just about 30 grams of collagen to 100 grams of milk. So it's like a hot, sweet coffee with yeah. a build-up in it. Yeah. Which is a good good tip. 
Yeah, it's a good taste as well. <laughs> it gets a bit gooey sometimes. You invented your own hot drink there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, the, the um, collagen, I've, I'd only ever have once a day, I think. Yeah. But the Scandi Shake, I had very rarely had a couple of drinks if I'm really low. Well, it's nice to hear that you've got a way of managing the appetite and the weight issues. You know, I know it's been a struggle, but it sounds like you've got a, a balance which, which is working for you right now, which is good.